In this Kalano update, some bad news and some good news. The bad news is that the Vassal Hard Fork is delayed once more. We'll go over that first. So the Vassal Hard Fork, uh, a few more weeks of testing, should have gone out in uh, June, got delayed. I thought it would be mid-August, potentially. They said it would be delayed until the end of July. You always have to give it a few weeks after that because these things are always delayed. Um, but a few more weeks from where we are before we go to the actual Vassal Hard Fork. This is a really big upgrade for Cardano. It's not just a normal upgrade with a few small changes. This is a really major set of changes right here because we have a lot of applications that want to launch right after this upgrade. And so there's obviously a lot of teething problems and you know potential issues that you just have to find during this process. And so not a big deal for me, but yeah, obviously frustrating for investors. Vassal, an upgrade designed to increase Cardano's scaling capabilities has been scheduled for a June release, followed by its introduction onto the mainnet. A hard fork is a backward incompatible change to the software used to validate and uh, produce new blocks. Important here is that all of the applications that were built previously will still be available to, to be used. Um, Sunday Swap came out and confirmed this. So just because an application, you know, doesn't update or, you know, upgrade to um, the new hard fork, they, they will still be able to be used. There are some differences with uh, the hard fork in terms of how applications can be used. And so you've got a load of lending protocols, Ardana, Ada, a bunch of others, Liquid Finance that really want to launch like straight away. And so they obviously have to make sure everything is right in the meantime. But yeah, a few more weeks. I would put this maybe end of August, let's say, um, before it goes through. So not a massive deal. Next up though is Ledger adding support for Cardano assets. This is great. So 100 native Cardano assets are now available on Ledger devices. If you don't have a Ledger, I'll leave the link in the description. I use Ledger devices. I have mine right here. So this is a hardware wallet um, and it's just far more secure than having it anywhere else even on YoRoy or something like that. Ledger hardware wallets now integrate perfectly with Cardano. So they have native support. Some blockchains don't, um, but they have native support with Ledger and Cardano now, meaning that you can put your ADA on there and it's about as safe as it can be, but you can also interact with the blockchain through YoRoy. Um, so yeah, I'll leave that link below. And if you don't know how to use them, I've got a tutorial on them as well, which I'll link in the description. It goes through like the setup process of a ledger so you can actually see how they work. Ledger have those started support for a hundred assets initially, and I'm sure there'll be way more coming as well. So obviously Cardano is the native asset, but there are other native assets as well on the Cardano blockchain. And this takes time, but you can see a hundred native Cardano tokens just made their way to your ledger live app. There are many more tokens, but for now we decided to support these 100 tokens first. Meanwhile, the new listing comes just a month after Ledger added full support for Cardano, allowing users to send, receive, and manage ADA directly from Ledger Live. So definitely good news if you are a Ledger user. Now, admittedly, most tokens on Cardano right now are like jokes, like stripper coin and all that nonsense, which is obviously funny and something that happens. Um, but there are some important ones as well. For example, Aneta BTC, which I think is important. So as we know, Ethereum has wrapped Bitcoin, which is... Uh, where, you know, obviously you can't use Bitcoin for DeFi on Bitcoin, but you want to uh, keep exposure to Bitcoin and use it on Ethereum DeFi, which is obviously a fantastic use case. You know, you can put it in liquidity pools and maybe earn some yields uh, from, you know, adding liquidity, uh, which is obviously a massive use case of Ethereum DeFi on Curb Finance and, um, you know, other, you know, LPs like that. Now, that this can happen on Cardano as well, and it's going to happen in the future, but obviously not there yet. But what's important is we have... Cardano's version of wrapped Bitcoin, right? You want Bitcoin so you can get exposure to Bitcoin, but you also want to maybe put it in liquidity pools and DEXs, you know, like wing riders or something like that. And so it's important that if you are a Cardano user, you have all of this at your fingertips. So you have a wrapped version of Bitcoin on the Cardano blockchain that you can very easily use with a hardware wallet. It's literally, you know, the ideal solution. And so as you can see, slowly coming online is just support for Cardano and all of the tokens and the DeFi that's going to be happening. So yeah, really exciting in that respect. Talking about DeFi on Cardano, there's a few things that I would like to happen before I really start uh, using the DeFi myself. I just don't think it's there yet for me personally in my use cases. I like to use stable coins and provide liquidity on those on a, a few different DEXs. You can get some really good returns on US dollar. I've got nothing against, uh, you know, having US dollar and earning some yields on that. 
Um, still not really possible on Cardano to any great extent. Now, MinSwap is growing its TVL or its share of TVL in the system. MinSwap and Wing Riders are the number one and two DEXs so far. Um, they have great design and, and you know they're great at what they do. As you can see here, if we just type in for stable coins, there's only one stable coin pair right now on MinSwap, which is ADA and then MAD USDC, which is Nomad. Um, so I'll get onto what that is. But as you can see, there's just there's no trading volume for this. And you know, I think it's really holding back these DEXs because um, when you look at other DEXs like Uniswap and PancakeSwap, they have, you know, m the, the biggest pair is always like a USDC or a USDT pair, right? A stablecoin pair. And so that's where a lot of liquidity is. And that's what a lot of people want to do when they uh, add liquidity, when you want to earn some yield from these. You want a, a stablecoin pair because you don't want impermanent loss and, you know, adding uh, liquidity pairs to very, very small tokens is just going to wreck you with impermanent loss. And so, yeah, it's something I want to see. And maybe after the hard fork, I know there's going to be Jed and there's going to be other stable coins. So interesting to see kind of how that plays out. That's just something we have to wait for. For now, as you can see with Wing, Wing Riders, they've definitely done more with the USD, um, the stable coin pairs. So you actually have a dual stable coin pair here, which is really great. So, you know, with dual stable coins, if you want to add liquidity here on the right hand side, you're not going to suffer any impermanent loss. Uh, or you shouldn't anyway, because you have US dollar tether and US dollar coin, um, both $1. And so there's no impermanent loss here. So this is a great way to actually earn yield on dollars. So you're not really taking, you know, risk as such, uh, apart from, you know, smart contract risk, platform risk, and obviously the risk of potentially one of them losing their peg, which I think is pretty low personally. But again, you can see the volume is just nothing, right? So unfortunately, the volume isn't there on those US dollar pairs, for me to add liquidity, um, you know, but that's going to be coming. If we're looking at other volume, you can see uh, Wing Riders actually did a million dollars in in trade volume in the last uh, 24 hours, which is is great. Just to compare this to other other ecosystems, right? A million dollars for Wing Riders. I think uh, MinSwap is about over a million dollars because it actually trades in ADA instead of dollars here, compared to something like Pancake Swap and Uniswap. So, Pancake Swap over the last 24 hours did 270 million in uh, trading volume and Uniswap on Ethereum. So that's the Ethereum mainnet did almost a billion dollars in trading volume and they're doing more volume on these other networks as well. So hopefully that kind of uh, gives you an idea of like where volume and trade is on Cardano compared to those other ecosystems. Now Cardano is number eight. It's valued at 17 billion, fully diluted around 20 billion. You know, that's just half of Binance and uh, a tenth of Ethereum's, but those two ecosystems have far more trade uh, going on on top of them. So um, just to kind of be aware that Cardano is, you know, still in the early stages. Um, so as an investment, you just have to kind of keep that in mind. It's also valued very highly at 20 billion considering the amount of current activity that's actually happening. But, you know, obviously you invest for the future and not for the now. And, you know, the Vassal Hard Fork is going to have lending protocols, which I think is going to explode the amount of kind of trade and volume on there, which, you know, through lending also means that DEXs have more use cases as well. So obviously that's yet to build up and the other two have gone through that in the last cycle. So yeah, interesting to see how Cardano comes. If you want to check out Ledger or the tutorial there, check that in the description so you can get your 100 Cardano tokens on there. And I'll keep you updated on the latest on the Vassal Hard Fork as well. I'm James, it's Money's UG, cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.